Hey everyone, I'm back and it's been almost a week since my last published review and um, music project. I was sick and I'm still not perfectly normal. You might hear it in my voice, but I still read all your messages and I would like to start by addressing one thing that came up in the next at Virgin Rock where I announced this song. And that is that a lot of you have been concerned that money making is, has become the determining factor that runs this channel or makes the choices of music in this channel. I want to reassure you and I want to say that I understand the reasons why some of you have thought that and since this channel and I am still very new to you, you haven't really uh, had enough time to really get to know me and us and so it's understandable but I want you to understand that although we do and we are accepting paid commissions Vlad is still making sure that my journey doesn't get derailed if a paid request isn't appropriate for where I am in my experience Vlad turns it down e either by refunding the money or discussing with the commissioner an, an alternative um, piece to listen to. And so many times Vlad and the commissioner agree through discussion to change the initial song of choice because they decide that another one is better suited for my journey. And so I want you to know that, that money is not driving the choices on this channel even though I am accepting paid commissions and requests. Along with the videos I'm putting up right now, we are also working hard on a secret project which hasn't been commissioned by anyone. It's something of our own choosing and for me it's a massive undertaking um, and it's going to be a surprise for the whole Virgin Rock community. I really can't wait to have it finished and share it with you all. I, I think you will also be able to understand a bit more about our approach to this journey then too when that comes out, but it's going to be a little while yet before I have it ready. Now, as a musician and somebody who creates music and, and lives in the world of music, I have a deep appreciation for the greats, the icons, the, the ones who've moved music forward in whatever age or genre or, or field. But I also enjoy discovering little off the beaten path gems and um, I'm doing a bit of that along the way, which is why some of these songs sound really obscure, perhaps unknown to some of you. Furthermore, another one of my upcoming projects, which is different from the secret surprise, is going to be focusing very heavily on iconic and majorly influential songs in the rock genre and history. So at this moment, I'm not obsessing about having each new listen be something standard or influential or, or the best known. Now back to the Beach Boys. This particular song comes in my experience on, on my journey right after Love Rain or Me by The Who. When we published the Next at Virgin Rock announcement of this particular song, most of you said, why this obscure one? Why not this or that one which are iconic for the Beach Boys? Why is this particular one so relevant to me right now? Well, let's see. This is a short, less than two minute long song but a lot happens in those two minutes and Brian Wilson said this song was written in approximately 90 minutes at around 2 a.m. So not only was it short in its performance recording, it was also very short in its uh, birth. The reason I love the fact that this whole world project follows right after the project I did with Love Rain or Me is that it's such a great contrast and juxtaposition. If you watched Love, Rain or Me, 
you'll remember that one of the things I enjoyed about it was how they used only one chord for the entire verse. Now here with this whole world, we're being thrown to the opposite wall, with not only chords changing fast and furious, but even a rapid sequence of modulations. Um, don't worry, if, if you don't know what that means, I'll explain it in a minute. Another thing that I enjoyed very much about this song is the balance between instruments and voices, and the outstanding vocal ensemble. I love choral and vocal ensembles. I listen to way more of that type of music than I do to solo voice. It's the same with a lot of other instruments, like violin. I enjoy a good solo violin from time to time, but you get a string orchestra together, and for me, the level of enjoyment just skyrockets. I simply enjoy the balance of sound and harmony that is produced in those types of settings. I wonder, I had this thought just today, what would an electric guitar orchestra sound like? Maybe I would like it. Now I'm imagining such a group playing something like a Vivaldi concerto or Bach organ transcription. It could be really interesting. Speaking of unusual instrument settings, have you ever heard this guy playing Bach and Vivaldi on accordion? If not, you should definitely check it out. Anyway, back to topic again. So, I love the way the Beach Boys have this vocal, instrumental ensemble accompanying the solo voice. I think it's great. Um, oh, and just a side note, when I first listened to this song, you might remember I was trying to figure out what words were being sung by the accompanying voices, but it turns out it's just a series of syllables for rhythmic and articulative effect. Actually, it's a pretty common device in singing ensembles. Some, for some reason, I didn't recognize it as being that. It sounded like it ought to be some words, but it's not. Anyway. Listen to how the vocal parts weave around and behind and through each other in this song. And then, just for fun, try to imagine it without any instruments at all. And if you're able to cut out the instrumental parts in your imagination, you can hear what's left, that it's vocally rich enough, it could almost work a cappella. But the instrumental accompaniment is handled so well that we'd never wish to cut it out, really. So we have this wonderfully balanced little song, not only in the solo line, but also the supporting textures. I've noticed in several of the rock pieces I've listened to so far, mainly the heavier styles or the lively, energetic, upbeat songs, that even when the singer has an important part, the instruments tend to overwhelm the voices, or if not, it sounds like a sort of competition between instrument and voice. So I appreciate the balance here. It's upbeat, happy, hopeful, but never drowning the singers, and nobody, whether singer or instrumentalist, is competing to be heard. So we get to sit back and enjoy all the parts, voices and instruments, for the entire short length of the song. Now let's dig into one of the things that I think makes this song so special and unique, and that is the harmonic design of it. I couldn't find a music score for this song. I spent about an hour looking and decided it's taking me too long. I'm just going to make a quick sketch by hand of what I want to show you. So some of the markings might look like chicken scratches because I was in a hurry. Don't worry. If you don't understand it, it's okay, I'll be explaining. So much happens so fast, and I want to break it down and kind of put it in slow motion for you. So first, let's do a quick review of chords. So remember that chords are named after the root note, meaning if I have a chord named a C chord, it's because I've built it with the bottom note, which we call the root, being the C, and everything else stacks above it. All right, so when I'm naming these chords, some of them have intimidating sounding names. Don't 
don't let it kind of feel like it's over your head. I'm simply naming the note on which the chord is built. And I might say minor or major. In fact, I'll explain a bit about minor and major. Let me do that right now. So, a major chord is this. And a minor chord is simply the middle note shifted one neighbor down. And that gives us the minor tonality. All right, we don't have to get more complicated than that. It's that simple. And we'll hear that happening in this song from time to time. So again, this is minor. Now I shift the middle note, neighbor up. Now it's major. They're both called C because they're both built on C. This is C major. This is C minor. Okay, it works for any chord, any note on which a chord is built. Now, this song, it's a very happy, upbeat song. It's um, in a major, you know, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, do, do, t, key. And it starts out in the key of C, like this. And you can hear it in the opening guitar notes. When you hear the song start, bum, the guitar is giving this little re repeti repeated note um, on C. And then when the other voices enter, um, um, but, that's, that's the, um, what's the syllables they use? Anyway, that's the accompanying voices. Um, but, dee, da, um, but, dee, da, right? So that's also a C. And then the solo voice is starting up here. And that is also built on this C chord. So we are solidly, brightly, happily in C major. Now, in the key of C major, we have seven chords instantly available to us. I can be in the key of C major, meaning I'm using Do, Re, Mi in all those notes built off of C. And each one of those notes has a chord that can be built off of it. So this is the first one, C. And you've heard me talk before about the four, four notes up, which is the subdominant, and the five, which is the dominant. These are the most commonly used chords in any major key. But we've got four others that are great as well. If I just simply walk up from C, I have the second chord, which is the two the minor chord, and this happens to be D minor because it's built on D. Then I have E minor, that's my minor three. Then, okay, we've already seen the four and five, F and G. Now we have minor six, which is A minor. And then we have this wonderful B diminished, which is the seven chord. We find ourselves back at C. Those are the chords that are built into the key of C major. We can use any one of them at any time if that's the sound we want. But suppose we want to add a bit more spice or color to the music. We can modify any one of these chords to give a little extra excitement. Kind of like wandering off the path a bit as we walk through a forest. And of course, we don't want it to be too much or too often Otherwise, we might get confused and lose our path. Then we'd no longer know where we are or how to get back home. So I can modify. Let's say I'm going to go to the sixth chord, which is A minor. I can modify it by moving the middle note up the neighbor. Now it's A major. Now it is no longer properly, solidly part of the C tonality, the key of C, but it's close enough, it gives a little bit of spice, and then we can find our way back home pretty easily. But let's take this idea of walking through the forest and uh, losing our path. If we do too many modifications, we lose track of where home is. But what if there's more than one path? What if there are paths branching all over the place? And that's kind of how it is in music. 
So let's see. We started out on the C major path. Okay? Then, just a short stretch later, we decide we want to take a different path. Well, we're not going to go back to the beginning and start over. I'm not going to start the song and then be like, oh, hold on, let's start the song in a different key. That's weird. It doesn't work. Instead, we look for a little side trail that will link us to the path we want. We'll say the path we want is A major, which is another way of saying, saying we want the key of A major. Well, in C, as I showed you, we have this A minor chord right here. That's on our C path. We can modify this note, as I showed you, one little note, and it suddenly becomes A major. And as I showed you, this could simply be a little side excursion off the C path without actually taking another path. Maybe I just stopped to smell a flower and then get back on the C path. But if I want my new path to be A, how do we know that we have arrived on this new path and actually have started walking on the A path. Well, we will know it when we start seeing things that are naturally a part of the A path scenery. And those are the chords that belong to A. I named the chords that belong in C. But A has its own set of chords. A is the first. Then we have B minor. Then we have C sharp minor. Remember, it sounds like a scary name. It's just naming the notes. We have D major, that's our four chord. E major is our five chord. And F sharp minor is six. And G sharp diminished, again, don't be terrified by the name. I'm simply naming, identifying the scenery along this path of A. If we are hearing those chords and not the ones belonging to C major, then we will know that we're now really, truly on the A path. And that is exactly what happens in this song. Let's check it out. So we start. Um, the lyrics go, I'm thinking about uh, this whole world. Late at night, I think about the... And so it goes, right? So all of that is happening in the C path. Um, the love of this whole world. Um, this whole world. Then here is where, all right, this was A minor. And then here is where it becomes A major. Is that a little side trip or are we really moving over to a new path? And suddenly after this we have F sharp minor. Well, that doesn't belong to the C path. It's something we see on the A path. And then B minor again belongs to the A path. And then E major. And then C sharp minor. All right, all of those chords I named do not belong to the C path. They belong to the A path. And so in that moment when we shifted from A minor to A major, we might not have been sure. But as we continue, we recognize this is really a new path. We are in a new key. The same thing happens on the next line where we end up in C major. This is where it says, and when I go anywhere. Um, we start with the word and on C sharp major. And we have to ask ourselves, is that a little side excursion out of A? Because A had C sharp minor. That's where we just were. But now we have C sharp major. 
this just a little spice or have we really jumped to another path? And as we go on, we have F sharp major and G sharp major and A sharp minor. And all of those belong to the C sharp major musical pathway and scenery around it. And then again, when we get to where the girls get mad at boys, we change keys yet again to B flat major. Um, when girls get mad at boys, and so on, right? Well, at the end of this, we magically end up back on some chords, which are part of the B-flat scenery, and then it shifts to something slightly out of the B-flat scenery, which takes us back to C, and we circle all the way back around to where we started. When we say we changed chords, we don't necessarily mean we left the path we've been on, but if we say we modulated, which is a fancy way of saying we changed keys, then we are saying that we transitioned to a different path. That is what happened in this song. And it took me a good deal of time to explain it, but in the music itself, it happens so rapidly. It's like we barely get started on one line and then the next line, suddenly we're on another path and then on another path. And that's what is so incredible about this little tiny, less than two minute piece of music. Remember, each of these paths are different from each other. Some are sort of in the same vicinity. Others really shoot off in a different direction or are kind of far out of a good distance away from our path that we are on. So of course the nearby ones often intersect quite easily and frequently. Many of those paths share the same scenery or the same chords, but others are more remote from our location and it takes a little more work to find a connecting trail, something that helps us get over there. And it tends to take a longer amount of time to make a smooth transition to the new path simply because it's further away. In this particular song, each new path really has quite a decent amount of distance from the previous one. And so it's not only the fact that there are so many modulations, which is remarkable enough, but also the fact that these modulations are not the nearest neighbor paths. And still, it feels like a fun, pleasant journey. We don't feel like we're being jolted unceremoniously from one place to another. Someone grabs their hands and says, ah, oh, over here, over here. The bass line, instrumental parts, vocal lines are all working together to make this happen. And it ends up being a lot of musical fun. The Beach Boys supporting keyboardist Daryl Dragon once commented on the song saying, from a harmony standpoint, I've never heard a song like that since I've been in pop music. I've never heard a song go through that many changes and come back. Well, as you know, I'm not terribly familiar with pop music yet, but it is true that even in classical music, you don't hear this sort of rapid changing of keys, of pathways in such a short amount of time, in such a short piece of music. Of course, we have these massive works and there are places where we're changing keys like this and this and this, but it takes a lot of setup time to prepare the listener for that. So I would agree that with my musical background and experience, this is a very unique, interesting harmonic scheme, which you don't see very often at all. Now about the lyrics. Brian Wilson said the lyrics are very spiritual and that the song is about love in general. 
That song came from deep down in me, he said, from the feeling I had that the whole world should, should be about love. When I wrote that song, I wanted to capture that idea. I think it captures the idea quite well. The second verse gets especially interesting because in this verse, he addresses not only love everywhere, but also when love ends. And he goes, when girls get mad at boys and go, and he points the eyes of the brokenhearted back to the whole world, to the big picture, emphasizing the two main reasons for still being happy. Happy because you're living and you're free. And he wants us to rest assured that here comes another day for your love. So this song is not only happy, but very encouraging and hopeful in an almost childlike simplicity. Simple, but beautiful. Now, you know, I'm always looking to see how the music conveys its message. And I think it's totally appropriate that since this is looking at the whole world, we find ourselves traveling from one key to the next rapidly, almost as if we're taking a fast trip around the world to all the different parts to see that love is everywhere, in every culture, every background, every lifestyle. Brian Wilson is not asking us to ignore the pain and suffering that exists in the whole world, but to celebrate and appreciate and preserve love, the best that there is. It's kind of like him saying, hey, come with me. I'll show you something real quick to brighten your day. Love all around the world. So do I like it? I do. It's fun, engaging, unique at least to my ears, and I'll definitely listen to it again, maybe even on a beach vacation, but also on a gloomy day when I need something uplifting, probably just after Love Rain or Me. <laughs> now, don't forget about the poll, which is still in the community tab. Go there and vote for your favorite band, because I will review the winning song next month. Also, remember that we publish both parts of my experience with this song at the same time here on YouTube, but <clears throat> both my first listen and my in-depth analysis. If you want early access to the first listen, all you have to do is visit my coffee page, make a donation of your choice, and that will give you early access to all my first listen and reaction videos. If you want to receive notifications when I post new content, you can activate it by clicking the little bell next to the subscribe button. And if you haven't seen it, do click this link to watch the first half of this experience where I do my first listen and reaction to this song. I'll see you soon.